Hi everyone, welcome to Xinhua Live. We are here at Summer Davos 2019, which this year is being hosted in Dalian, the beautiful coastal city in northeastern China. Now, I'm currently standing at the bottom of some stairs that will lead us to three extremely cool technology exhibitions. So let's go check them out. So first of all, just some fun facts about Summer Davos. This year, the theme is Leadership 4.0, Succeeding in a New Era of Globalization. This year, there will also be almost 2,000 participants, for, whether they be business people, media officials and academics um, from 100 countries. And the event will run from July 1st to 3rd. And now we're going to check out the first exhibition, which, as you can see, is called The Human Element which I think sounds very interesting. So let's go meet the manager of the exhibition and see what he has to say. Hello. Hi, nice to see you today. How are you? Nice to meet you. Could you please uh, introduce yourself to our viewers yes. and tell us a little bit more about the exhibition that you have put together here? Yes, I'm the CEO of a company called Pinscreen. I'm also a professor at uh, USC. And uh, the technology that we're showing here uh, basically allows you to turn yourself into someone else wow. in real time. And all we need is a single picture. So um, if you want, I can just show you a demo. Great, let's go check it out. All right. This sounds really cool. So in this booth uh, over here, um, the setting is very simple. It's basically just a virtual mirror. So please have a seat. Great, wow. So if you look into that, this is a regular webcam, nothing fancy. And by the press of a button, mm -hmm. I can basically digitize your face in 3D. So wow. there you go, that's it. Now oh. I have a 3D model of your face. That if you move your head around, scary. it's following your face, it's yeah. doing your facial expression. But mm -hmm. that's not uh, the most interesting part of it. Mm -hmm. The really interesting part here is that all we need is a picture of anyone um, and we can basically generate their facial expressions. So, wow. for example, I can turn you into Audrey Hepburn. So oh great, she's my favorite actress of all time. So okay. let's go with Audrey Hepburn. Let's start with her. So I wow. take that one picture and there's nothing else in that picture other than her neutral face. And what it does is that in real time, it's synthesizing your facial expression. So if you open your mouth, you can see that it's generating teeth Look. in real time using yeah. a deep learning approach, right? So it's really using AI to generate content in real time. I can turn you into wow. someone else. It can be Neil Armstrong. Okay, this is what it's like to be an astronaut. <laughs> exactly. Taster. Or a martial art artist, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Lee. Wow. Right, um, and it doesn't really matter if it's male or female. Um, yeah, it works. You can basically face swap with anyone else. Oh, great, Frida Kahlo. She's also one of my heroes. Right. This so, is pretty cool with the monobrow. I have a monobrow officially. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so these are interesting, you know, public figures, celebrities. Uh, so there's obvious questions about, you know, what mm -hmm. if we have the ability to create the content that we want? What if your identity does not belong to you anymore? People can basically, uh, you know, take any picture of someone on Instagram, on Facebook, and basically generate uh, arbitrary content. Mm -hmm. So that becomes something um, yeah. kind of dangerous. Yeah, so it raises a lot of ethical concerns, I guess. Ethical yeah. concerns, legal concerns. Wow, that is some itself, right? very deep stuff. Thank you so much for explaining that. It's very, yeah. very interesting. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thank you. Great, so for those who are just joining us, we are here at Summer Davos 2019 in the beautiful coastal city of Dalian. Uh, we're currently exploring three really interesting technology exhibitions. We've just gone to the human element, which raised a lot of uh, ethical concerns around the issue of deep freak. And now we are at the hospital of the future. So if you're just joining us for human element, please drop your comments about what you think of this. and. Next, we're going to talk to somebody from the hospital of the future. And here he is. He is the representative from this exhibition. So could you please just tell us a little bit about the, you know, the theme of this exhibition and what we're kind of seeing in terms of like the future of, you know, medical technology? Right, yeah. So this is the uh, hospital of the future. What we're presenting here is actually a uh, robot assisted surgical platform, which contains three major parts. The first one here is the uh, patient card, where we have four op 
a robot arms working on the patient. And then we have another part is calling a, uh, a surgeon council, where the surgeon will be controlling the robot. And then we have the third part is a vision card, where the uh, vision of the surgical area is collected and processed and provided to the uh, surgeons over there. <laughs> Wow, and so like you can see here there's a, a rose that's kind of being dismantled <laughs> somehow. It, it, I guess this is kind of to represent like a human organ or yes, something exactly. and, and how it would kind of be operated on. Exactly. So here's a, what we would love to show is how the robot can enable a minimum invasive surgery. So, yes. Let's take a look inside. It's yes. pretty cool. So as you can see, a rose has just been basically operated on. And how does this does this raise any kind of like ethical concerns? Like people would probably a bit feel a bit nervous about being operated on by you know technology rather than a, a qualified surgeon. So right. you know, like obviously. The surgeon that's operating this must have some a lot of training, I guess, involved yeah, exactly. here. Yeah. So this system is a already commercialized product, mm -hmm. so it has a proven effectiveness, proven safety mm -hmm. for the patient, yeah. and then it's, it's actually already broadly accepted worldwide. Right. But then, so what future will be, right? So this mm -hmm. the, this is the technology what we have for now. But coming next generation, how can we benefit the uh, patients better? Yeah. That remains a question. Right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we would love to have the audience to think about that. We would love to have the, the audience to, to tell us what do you prefer? What do you think about the future yeah. will be? Would you trust being operated exactly. by a robot or do you prefer a, a human? Surgeon, surgeon. Yeah, or and you prefer a better cooperative surgery mm. between a yeah. mark between the, the uh, robot and the surgeon. Right. Yeah. And I guess like with this technology, it, the idea is that it, it is more precise and exactly. it, it's, it's safer. Yes. So the idea is that this it, is it all, improves people's health. Exactly. Right? That's all patient driven. Right. We really provide uh, a less pain. We really provide a, a better out outcome of the clinical result. Yeah, that's, wow. all, that's all what we are dri dri driving for. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, sounds like a very interesting future in the field of of medicine so yeah please drop your comments about what you think of that and whether you would want to have a surgery by a robot in the future okay. so great thanks so much Thank for joining you. us today so for those just joining us we're here at summer davos 2019 and we're currently exploring three technology exhibitions and we're here at the last one which is called biometric mirror which sounds very very interesting we're going to join the manager of the exhibition over here Hi, could you please introduce yourself to our viewers today? Hello, I'm Frank Viteri, Professor Frank Viteri from the University of Melbourne and uh, I, I do research in human-computer interaction and I'm responsible for this um, installation called the Biometric Mirror. Great, let's go check it out then. So as we can see, people are standing in front of a camera and it's tracking their face and looking at their attributes so maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about what the concept is here well the, the concept is is um, um, <laughs> participants come and they have their face scanned and the, the face the face is then compared to a database of 10,000 other faders, faces and, um, and these other faces have been tagged according to a series of attributes as we can see there things like kindness uniqueness responsibility and attractiveness indeed attractiveness indeed and so um, when as as a result of that, that comparison, mm -hmm. we get a score as to the degree to which uh, the participant's face matches those those 10,000 other faces. Mm -hmm. So um, these are, are perceived attributes. Yes. Attractiveness is a really good example where it's just how you're perceived as to whether you're attractive or not. Yeah, so as you can see now, so a person comes and so let's they... Check out this, uh, so, um, so, and we, we start with very um, uh, less controversial type of, uh, uh, of, of attributes and slowly progress into areas that are much more controversial that, that require others to to give an appraisal but the the, the point here is that the appraisal is done directly on the photograph which has um, what you know and it's important to ask the question how much can you tell from a person's face right and here it's, it's constantly asking like do you want to continue so it's checking that they have like the consent of the individual exactly right. whether they want to continue that's right and so unlike other I mean other 
systems where we might have profiling, mm -hmm. that uh, you might be in a condition where, where you're uh, in a shopping mall where you might be profiled but you don't, you're not asked consent, we, we explicitly want to make sure that people are consenting mm -hmm. to continue. Um, so you see a, a range of uh, um, profiles and this is, the. it's important to realise that this is how others uh, perceive a face that looks like this. Right. And has this raised any like ethical concerns when you were uh, researching for this project? Sure, sure. I mean, it's, it's primarily here to interrogate the ethical questions. Right. So it's important that, um, that firstly we're aware that we can do this kind of work. It is, um, it, it's possible to use machine learning techniques to, to assess the characteristics of a face against attributes that are typically not done. So it's possible to do that. Firstly, that's important to realise this. And secondly, um, we need to think about how this sort of data can be used. Um, then we've used examples where um, uh, this data could be used for recruitment agencies for shortlisting to get a job, for instance. Uh, it could be used in um, insurance companies. You know, you know, if you're assessed to be responsible, or you know, or uh, not frugal with your money, you know, perhaps you're mm. then then you're not not given an interview to get a to get yeah. a loan. So these things are possible. I'm not suggesting that that necessarily um, a company would do this. I mean, we'd, we'd we'd expect them to be much more rigorous in their approach. But the point being is, these kind of activities can be done, mm -hmm. and um, and and we need to we need to keep asking questions about yeah. when they are being done this way. That that we we're aware of that that process yeah so it's about the future of technology making sure it's constantly being ethical as it as it evolves yeah and that. the ethics yeah. really is going to be up to all of us to ensure that we're informed mm -hmm. about those decisions mm -hmm. so decision makers make making sure that those decisions ha the process of those decisions are made apparent to those that are affected mm -hmm. by it and to generally aware, raise awareness amongst all of us that we're um, that we're, we're happy to ask questions about how people have come to decisions that, that affect us. Policy makers, legislators, yes. business involves leaders, everybody. involves yeah. everyone, yeah. yeah. So up the, up the standard of education yeah. and literacy around AI. Great, thank you so much for joining us. That was absolutely fascinating. Lovely. Lovely thank you, you so by. much for okay. joining Lovely. us. Yeah. Great, so I guess that's it for our first live stream of Summer Davos 2019. Uh, please, please drop your comments below as there have been some absolutely fascinating comments from the managers uh, hosting these exhibitions. And please do join us for more live streams throughout Summer Davos over the next few days where we will be discussing uh, fourth industrial revolution and as well as the future outlook for the Chinese economy. So thank you so much again for joining us and thank you so much to our interviewees and see you next time.